Happy Wednesday. I'm continuing on. This, this is a continuation of the message that I did yesterday. I'm doing I'm, I'm doing two parts of this right now because I'm on a, I'm on a roll here about this about the blessing of the Lord and why God could not bless me. This is huge, folks. This is huge. This is the secret that nobody else knows. I mean, nobody else knew this. I'm, gonna sh I'm sharing it with you right now. I started out yesterday and I'm doing this again today. So make sure you, if you didn't watch yesterday, watch yesterday before you watch this one. Go back and watch yesterday's. Go to my YouTube channel, type in Pastor Jim Kibler in the box and you'll see both videos. Amen, you'll see the red shirt. Say this with me on this happy Wednesday. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Good things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I have the power to get wealth. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. Call me today, especially if you did your offerings and donations, because I want to speak the blessing over you. Amen. We are talking about, and share this video, please, with everybody you know. Everybody. There should be 100,000 people watch this video. Because this is the secret to God's blessing. That nobody knows. Nobody knows the secret to God's blessing. Oh my goodness. I was telling you yesterday about the fact that we had a major failure in our life. And I cried out to the Lord. And I said, I knew the blessing was not upon me. People say, oh, Pastor Jim, you're blessed because you get, you get blessed when you get saved. Oh, yeah? Well, why are so many of so many good, spirit-filled, Bible-thumping, faith, healing, tongue-talking, meeting, going, CD-listening Christians broke and sick? The reason is because they're not blessed. The blessing of the Lord and the born-again experience and the baptism of the Holy Ghost are different. Just because you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost does not mean you're blessed, folks. That does not mean the blessing of the Lord is upon you. Because I'll tell you what, in, in uh, Proverbs 10, 22, it says the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. And he has no hard work or toil to it. If you're not rich, if you don't have more money than you need, you're not blessed. Oh, Pastor Jim, how can you say that? I'm telling you. I'm telling you what the Bible says. And it says, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. Which means plenteous in goods, more than you need. If you don't have more than you need, folks, you ain't blessed. If you're struggling to pay your bills, you ain't blessed. I want to get you blessed. And I know the secret. This is a huge secret. And most very, and, and nobody else knew this. Nobody else knew it. I hunted through all of Kenneth Copeland's stuff. Read his books. Hey, he wrote a book on the blessing that thick. And it did not tell me how to get the blessing. Another guy wrote a book called The Blessed Life. He's got a whole cottage industry on the blessed life. And that guy, bless his heart, what's his name, Morris? Robert Morris, wonderful preacher, but he don't know how to get the blessing to come upon somebody. And neither does anybody else. Bill Winston talks about the blessing. He didn't know how to do it. He might now because I sent him my book. I sent Kenneth Copeland books. I even told somebody who knows him to give him one. I don't know if he did or not. I don't think he did. 
I don't think he handed him that book. He said he was going to, but he didn't. If he had, Kenneth Copeland would have looked at it and his whole ministry would have changed. Because I found out how to make the blessing happen. Nobody else knew. Everybody talked about it. They talked about, oh, how you doing? Well, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yeah, well, then what are you doing in the ditch? What are you doing working so hard for so little money if you're so blessed? Those people in my church got very upset with me about teaching about the blessing because they said, oh, Pastor Jim, we're so blessed. And they couldn't even afford to send their kid to college. Don't tell me about how blessed you are. We got somebody in our church just built a million dollar home, 8,500 square feet. Let me tell you something. That guy is blessed. That's blessed. He's got more money than he needs. He is blessed. And he's got the blessing of the Lord upon him. That's blessed. We live in a beautiful home. Cars in the garage. New cars. Paid for. Airplane sitting over to the airport. We got it. We, we own an airplane. It's paid for. We're blessed. We got enough money to pay our bills and money left over. We're blessed. That's blessed. I'm not, not talking about millions and billions of dollars. I'm talking about more money than you need to live a good life. That's blessed. And I want every one of you to live that way. And nobody knows how. Nobody knew how to make it happen except me. Am I bragging? Sure. Because I found out. I found out. I'm telling you what, I went after the Lord over this. He told me. He told me, he said, after eight months of, I mean, to tell you, it was very, it was so intense that Mary and Jean told me I had to leave the house. You know what? Don't be so intense in your house, folks. Because cause, cause the people in your house can't stand it if you live with people. They said, go to the beach. Go sit in the car. Go down the block. Go walk the dog. Do something but get out of the house. Got too intense for him. This was me and the Lord, folks, one-on-one. -on -one. And finally, after eight months, he spoke to me. And he said to me, the key to the blessing is in Mark chapter 16. Ooh. Ooh. Now I know I'm hearing God's voice. I know God's voice when he speaks to me. He speaks to me in an audible voice inside my belly, not inside my head. God doesn't talk to you in your head. He talks to you in your spirit. And it was a, it was a loud voice, audible voice. I heard it. But I didn't know what he meant. I mean, I know, I've read Mark chapter 16 a bunch of times. It was the basis for my miracle ministry. But I didn't get, I didn't know what the blessing was. Finally, after a week, he said it again. The blessing of the Lord, the key to the blessing is in Mark chapter 16. I went, oh. Well, I still didn't get it. How many of you know God is so patient with us? He loves us so much. I'm telling you what, folks, we serve a wonderful, wonderful God. A God who loves us more than I can even tell you. Finally, after another week, he came to me again when I was waking up in the morning. He said to me, how God anointed, now he's quoting his own word, now, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And I got out of bed. I flew out of bed and grabbed my Bible and opened it to, De to Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. It says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. That was me. I was not prospering. But thou shalt be only oppressed forever and nobody shall be able to help you. I was being oppressed. And I knew 
that if it was oppression of the devil, it was subject to the name of Jesus. I stood there and I broke that curse. I said, in a, and see, that's part of the curse of the law, and I knew that. I said, in the name of Jesus, I break the curse of the law in my life. The reason God could not bless me was because the curse of the law was in place. And God himself will not, cannot remove curses from our life. The reason he can't is because he gave us the authority on this earth. We have to do that ourselves. Jesus could remove curses and cast out devils because he was born of a woman. That gave him the authority to do it. The, he had power because he was the son of God. But the authority came because he was, he was born. He called himself the son of man. That's Adam. He was also called himself the son of God. He was both. I am not the son of God. God, will, God is my heavenly father, but he is not my earthly father. I have an earthly father, but he was Jesus's earthly father too. So Jesus was truly the son of God. I'm not, but I am the son of man. Amen. He, God would refer to people as the son of man. He referred to Ezekiel as the son of man. Ezekiel 37. Huh? So I had to do this myself. See, I have the authority to cast out devils. And Mark chapter 16, verse 17 says, These signs shall follow them that have faith in my name. They shall cast out devils. That's the authority and the power to do it. And I did it. I'm telling you what. And the blessing started to flow in my life. The blessing started to flow in Kenneth Copeland's life in 1967 when he broke the curse of the law in his life. He just doesn't have a revelation of that. If he did, he would be screaming it from the rooftops. He even said in one of his videos from 2006 on a Monday, the Manifestation of the Blessing series, he said when he broke the curse of the law in his life, the blessing started to flow. Yes, because there's nothing to block the blessing once the curse is broken. And God can bless you. But he could not bless me as long as that curse was there. That's why God could not bless me. If you're not getting blessed, folks, there's a reason. There's a reason. I guarantee you it's because the curse is still there. Somehow or another, you're hanging on to it. You need to let it go. Let me break that curse in your life. Because once that curse is gone, I guarantee you the blessing of God will flow in your life. I guarantee it. Because God is sit, standing there, right there waiting to bless you. But he cannot cause the blessing to come upon you as long as the curse is in place. It is the blessing blocker. It blocks the blessing. There is not room enough in your spirit for the blessing and the curse at the same time. The curse must be removed and God will not remove it. We have to cast out devils. Jesus gave us the authority to cast out devils. You call me today. I'll break that curse in your life. I'll cast out the curse of the law in your life and you just keep your mouth shut and watch what happens. Please share this video with everybody you know. I want everybody to, to, to now you know the secret to God's blessing is breaking the curse. If you're struggling, the curse is there. If you're sick, the curse is there. If you're having trouble paying your bills, the curse is there. Call me. I'll break it for you because that's what I do. I'm the curse breaker, folks. I wrote the book on it. I am determined you're going to live a curse-free, blessed life. And I will use the power in the name of Jesus to do it.